This is what we're doing at Birmingham Futsal Club for our player performance analysis. Now, there are far greater minds than mine that have already thought about this. So, the danger is we try and measure everything. And, and not everything that can be measured is worth measuring. You know, we, could get, we could get paralysis from having too much data. And the whole point of collecting data is that we process it and we make decisions based on that data. If we have too much data, we never get to a point where we can make decisions. So the big thing is, how do we know we are measuring the right things? And, and we don't. So for a starting point, um, I looked at the Euros and there was a, there was a performance pack uh, that profiled the players. And it generally looked at about six things that were measured. So, how many times a player lost the ball? How many times the player lost the ball in their own half? How many times a player recovered the ball? Did they, <coughs> did they recover the ball in the opposition half? And shots, shots on target. And from those, that, that can give you a reasonable overview that doesn't take too long to do. It, it doesn't measure everything, but it gives you enough, I think. Yeah. There's a few extra bits I've put in there, so I deliberately haven't used, we, we, we've already spoken about this, I deliberately haven't used assists, because assists are not good. So if Danny plays the ball to me ten times, and it's a good opportunity, and I kick the ball over the crossbar ten times, that's not Danny's problem. He should have ten points, and my shooting is not Danny's problem. So instead of assists, we use big chances created. So the key is, we need to have some statistics so we can make decisions from them. Um, if we have too many stats, we never get around to making decisions. And Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Blink about trying to harness the subconscious mind to make decisions, not being paralysed. You can have too much data. Uh, I, th I think in everything it's a happy medium. You try and balance it. And we've spoken before about the double tick approach. So lots of boffins can say, Player I is no good, he's lost the ball 26 times. But somebody else can say that's because of the position he was playing in, that's because of the opposition, that's because he was injured. So statistics alone are dangerous. You need a double tick approach where futsal people look at it and have their own opinions and you've got statistics. And if the two, if the two agree, then that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to go, through, to go through what we've got so far for this season, We've had two friendly matches that are on here. So we play England Death Team over in Lillishaw. So we have all the statistics for this match. And we played City of Peterborough a week later. We've got all the statistics for that. Following on from there, we played Loughborough in the Super League. And we've got the breakdown per player for that game as well. Now, Danny made a really good point, which was if we, if we aggregate that data together, which is what we do here, we, we look at all the matches all, all combined. There's a problem with that, which, as Danny rightly says, um, the, the psychology of the match is different for a friendly than in the Super League. And the Super League, the range of ability is a lot narrower, whereas friendlies, you could be playing a whole broader range of ability of teams. So a player might get you might, score, you might score three goals in a friendly in the summer, and that's not worth as much as one goal in the Super League. So it's important to, in my everyday business, we call that the granularity. So how low a level are you going to? So if we, if we threw away the data at the bottom and only kept the top level, that would be no good. So we, we stored the granularity of the game actually goes down to each half. So there are some players, um, Player I, in, in the examples, generally plays better in the second half, but we only know that because we keep the data for the first half and the second half, then we combine that to make per match analysis, and then we can combine selected matches, so for instance we can compare the profile of the player in friendlies with the profile of that same player in the Super League, mm. but that's because we store it at the granularity of half game. 
So by the end of the season, I've got a hunch that player I, in this example, is a slow starter and his second halves are generally better. But we'll be able to measure that. We'll know by the end of the season. Good, good. Yeah. We can manage it. Yeah. Um, there's, there's lots of approaches we can use. I worked at, at the time they were in the Premier League, with their youth development. Um, looking at video, doing analysis on it, and it was, there were two approaches. First of all, are we identifying the correct talent? So are we missing the players that are coming in? So for instance, a coach, there's two coaches and it's pouring down and one coach has a conversation with the other coach and something goes on here and then you look again at the game and you say that player's done nothing all night and the coach has missed it. So it's important to use video analysis after the event. Um, also, you can be less subjective. You can go back and check what really happened. So one approach there was to make sure we were getting the right players in, and it was an impossible question. Are we getting a player in that's going to be good in six years' time? So it, was, it went some way to try and answer that question. And the other approach was, how can we help the players? So is this player consistently doing something that we can coach him or her with and help him with? So in, in the case of that club, there was, there was a player, um, it, was, it was football, but he was consistently not cutting out his passing lines. It was a quick win. So, based on the data, we could then go back, give him a coaching point, and we could measure the impact of that coaching point. And you also get interesting statistics. You work out how coachable a player is. So, for instance, if you have a player here who's not recovering the ball enough, and you work with that player on that point, and you see some improvement, that's great. You might not see improvements. Is that because the player is not technically able to do it? I mean, or is it they don't did feel good? Could be. Could be. It could be that the player psychologically doesn't want to do it. He yeah. can run faster yeah. going forwards than he can coming back. <clears throat> yeah. So but often the data gives us more questions. It answers some, but it gives us more questions. Yes. But it hopefully Everyone has opinions, hopefully they put some numbers behind that. So there are there are lots of there are lots of shortcomings, lots of areas that had assumptions made to them because the world is complex and we have to make assumptions to try and model it and understand it. So some figures some figures are okay. They could be better. So shots, shots is a big one for me. Mm -hmm. Just because you have more shots doesn't necessarily mean that player or that team has been better. So for instance, um, one of our recent matches, the opposition had twice as many shots. However, it comes down to where on the court those shots are coming from. So for instance, in, in football, there's a lot of work now, and it's even found its way as much of the day. Um, we've seen XG, expected goals. So, XG. What is it? Expected. I'll explain. Okay. Expected goals. In football, for instance, there's so much data that's been collected now. Decades of good quality data, and based on that, a lot of statistical modelling. In football, you could say if a player gets the ball in the penalty area here and shoots against the goalkeeper without a challenge from a defender, he will have a certain percentage chance of scoring. You can only work out that percentage with large amounts of data. So, for instance, he might have a 50% chance of scoring from here. However, if he shoots from here, you might have a 2% chance of scoring. Mm -hmm. So, to apply that to our last match, the opposition had twice as many shots. However, to put it into some sort of context, if, if a team has five shots from inside the D, and we don't know the figures, the actual percentage figures, but to illustrate the point, if a player shoots from here, and we say that player's got a 40% chance of scoring, then 
five shots from here. You see in our team? Any team. This is just an example. Okay, just let them know. Five shots with a 40% probability of scoring. There's two goals. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say the opposition had 20 shots from the halfway line. 20 shots from the halfway line, if we put a figure of say 5% probability of that going in, 20 shots at 5% is just one goal. Mm -hmm. So one team's had 5 shots, one team's had 20 shots, who's the better team? So these are the shortcomings with things that have been measured. I put it out there on Twitter to see if anybody's, I'm not hopeful. I wanted to see if anybody had done any expected goals, XG modeling in futsal. I don't think that's out there because there's not enough data sets. We could probably come up with our own. I'm sure if we divided the court up, we could, we could match footage and say, we know that if we have 20 shots, three of them go in from this, this part of the court. We could possibly do that. Um, that's getting a little bit more sophisticated, but for now, so we don't get paralyzed from too much data, we just work on those six or seven factors. Other things we need to be careful of is strength of the opposition. So if we're playing weak opposition, we would expect all the players' stats to be very high in all the positive things. Shots on goal, chances created. We'd expect the goalkeepers to have um, very good pass completion ratios for teams that, that drop off very deep and only play half-court press. Some of our goalkeepers are psychologically more adventurous. They will they will look out look for that long ball, which may be a better ball, even though they lose it more, we lose possession, it may be a better ball sometimes in that it's generating a chance on goal. So on its own, for instance, pass completion for a goalkeeper needs to be used in context. Uh, we had a match, one of our friendlies, the team just dropped off, played half court. And the goalkeeper had 100, he played 15 passes, 15 completed. But with respect, I would have got a similar figure just dropping the ball at the edge of my day. Yeah, I would. Um, so we need to be careful. Don't just rely on numbers on their own. Um, another, another big factor here is we can't just compare players with each other without understanding the context. So, for instance, the player who's Batman or Closer or Sierra is probably going to lose the ball more than a player in another position yeah. because he's, he's, got a, he's got a lot of pressure on him to find, out, to find the forward passes. So generally, he'll lose the ball, it'll, it'll go down as, as not lost in his own half because it may be a pass that didn't quite complete, so it was lost in the opposition half. But well, that player will also, at times, almost like the quarterback, he, he's responsible. He's the player that's going to be losing the ball in his own half. It doesn't necessarily mean he's a bad player. So comparing the back man, comparing the closer with the pivot is not valid. Maybe if you're comparing two players in the same position, that's valid. If they're doing the same role. But again, we can't just say, this guy lost the ball 26 times. This guy lost the ball four times, so who's the best player? You have to be careful. Also, these figures are unadjusted. These are pure figures. So player F has been on the court for 25 minutes and recovered the ball 12 times. Player H has been on the court for 79 minutes, almost twice, and recovered the ball seven times. We need to adjust so that the players have the same amount on the court, so we get a proper comparison. So, if we look further, further down, this one is adjusted. This is adjusted for all games to a 40 minute game. Another danger that's present here, this player, player G, player G is only playing 10 minutes, so, when that gets adjusted, whatever that player did in those 10 minutes is going to be multiplied by 4, so that data is not that reliable. I would be more confident with a player such as this player, 84 minutes on the court, 
Still not enough, but we're getting an idea of that player's profile. So that 84 minutes has effectively been roughly halved to come up with these figures, and that's why you have a decimal point. That's why you could score, for instance, 5.2 goals. Mm. Um, it's standardised to be a 40 minute game. Sorry, Mark. The column on the right, the, the, the grey one. This one. Yeah? Yeah. That shows the actual minutes that it's been reduced by. Uh, this is the factor that it's multiplied by. Right. So, for instance, if we look at this player, player C, 84 minutes, to get that down to 40, you need to multiply it by a figure that's probably just a bit less than half. Right. So, that's 0.47. Okay. So, this, if it's grey, that's a working column. Right. Okay. So, that's the factor that's applied to the absolute amount, to get these amounts here. Okay. For instance, 26, this, this player, 80 minutes. 26 shots. So in 40 minutes, 13 shots. Yeah? Lo divido entre 4. Lo divido entre 4. The top one? Is the, the whole of the game? This is absolutely. Three games. Yes? Mm -hmm. So we have three games. Two friendlies? Yeah. And one. Uh, Super League. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the top one in the table is the figures for the all three games. Yes? yes? And then the bottom one, if you add, include the formula, then it works out for one yes. game. That same idea is what we use each, each game, so let me show you. So last game, player E uh -huh. was only on the court for less than 10 minutes. Uh -huh. However, in that time, he scored one goal and he created one big chance. He was only on the court for 10 minutes. Yeah. So if he was on, it's crude, but if he was on the court for 40 minutes, four he scored four goals and created four big chances. So that's the same adjustment <laughs> Can do it on a per match basis, but that's not that's not guaranteed that he will. No, do. no, no, but no, it's not guaranteed. guaranteed. It's, it's a mid. It's a pass. Ahora lo que habéis ha visto que ponía un gol en 10 minutos. Si tengo esa media, es una media relativa de que cada 10 minutos meto un gol. Cada en un partido meto cuatro. Si juego todo el partido. Pa juego Cuba. Tai UEFA futsalo čempionu ligos preliminarus. Good day. Yeah, so tired today. My first working day. <laughs> <laughs>